Today on February the 12th, 2019, Adobe's done some updates to Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC. Let's have a look at these new features right now. Have you ever seen those crime shows, you know, when there's the nerd on the computer looking at the picture, it's all kind of fuzzy, and then the star of the show says, enhance, and then they just click the button, and suddenly it looks amazing. All right, we have a feature called enhance details. Now, it might not work as magically as what you see on your favorite crime show, but it does work quite well. So what it does is it works on raw files, and the way the raw files are interpreted, it can do an enhanced version of it where it does better detail, better color, and uh, reduces artifacts and different things like that. Now this works on any raw file, but it particularly works really well with the Xtrans files, which are used on the Fuji camera. So if you're shooting with one of these Fuji cameras, you're really gonna love the difference. Now you will notice it on the ballast sensor, you know, things like Canon and Nikon as well. But let's have a look here. So here's a photograph directly out of camera that I shot on the Fuji X-T10 down Laguna Beach. And we can see the photograph. Now, if we right click on here, and by the way, this works inside of Lightroom, Classic CC, and also in Camera Raw, you'll see an option that says Enhanced Details. Now, if we click on this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna examine the photo. So what's actually happening is rather than doing the traditional uh, debowering from the sensor, what it's doing is it's actually using Sensei, which is Adobe's artificial intelligence, and it's using AI to actually get a better, more enhanced version of this particular photograph. So here we go. This is what the enhanced version would look like. It's just kind of an estimate. It's just going to take about five seconds to do it. If I hold it down, notice this is what it looks like without the enhancing. And notice how the enhanced picks up these fine details and the little bits of color here that would otherwise kind of just get lost. So what we need to do is just click on enhance and then what it's going to do is you can see up here it's creating a DNG file and it's just going to kind of pop it in there. There we go. And so if you look at this, here's our RAF file, which of course is our Fuji file. And then right next to it, we've got enhanced DNG. So there's our original version and there's our enhanced version. So let's bring them up side by side and we can compare them right here. Why don't we just zoom in a little bit and we can start to compare some of the details. Okay, if we look in areas like here, see how much better detail and color we've got there? And you can particularly find in places like this and in other places, you know, such as some of the detail in the ocean. Let's look at these water splashes. You can see how much better that looks. You know, the color, the contrast, um, and just see how smooth it is without, see some of the artifacts in here? And notice in here it's much smoother. Okay, let's have a look at the tethering improvements. Now, the big move this time is on Nikon cameras. On the previous update, they did updates to make the Canon cameras work faster, and they do work significantly faster under tethering. Uh, the Nikon cameras have that, but there's another new thing. Here, I've got a Canon 5D Mark IV, and if I just choose here and I just go to tethered capture, one of the things you'll notice is they don't have all the menus anymore for the different cameras. It's just start tethered capture. We're gonna click on here, and it's simple as that, detects the camera, and there we go. Now it knows it's a Canon 5D Mark IV, and I can go in and I can look at the camera here. I can adjust the focus and everything. I can take a picture. Now, if that picture is too dark, and we see it here, notice I can make the adjustments on the camera, and if I make the adjustments, you'll see they're gonna change there, or I can actually change the adjustments right here inside of the capture. So I could set up a camera remotely if I wanted, and I could set up all my settings here and then just remotely click that shutter button. So I could click here and it would remotely take that picture for me without me having to hold it. So that's some nice additions there to tethering. All right, so here we are right now inside of Lightroom CC. Now, of course, the difference between CC and Classic is Lightroom Classic is what used to be <laughs> Lightroom CC. Now, I've made a video on the differences, uh, but essentially, you know, your desktop-based workflow that you've always been using, the Lightroom you've always known and loved, is Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC is a cloud-synced version of Lightroom. So there's a desktop component, and there's also a mobile component on your phone and on your iPad. All of those stay in sync. Uh, so if you're out shooting out in the field, it will update on your computer and vice versa. You make your adjustments on the computing, make your adjustments on your iPad, your iPhone, they all stay in sync. All the photos are also in sync. So you add a photo to one, 
it's added to all of them. So, so a big thing that's been added is HDRs and panoramas. So if we look at something like this, let's talk about HDR. And of course, I've done tons and tons of things on HDR. So you can check out, you know, my other tutorials here on that. Okay, so here's an HDR. So we've got a photograph. I've bracketed three shots. This is my DJI Phantom 4. And if you look at it here, we've got this shot. We can see that all the nice detail here, but see how the cloud detail is being lost? And then here we're exposed for all the nice cloud detail. And we're picking up these beautiful reflections. Of course, it's getting very dark down here. And then there's the medium shot. So if we bracket it, which I did here with my DJI drone, and capture all three of those photographs, we can get the full dynamic range of the photo. So we're going to just right click on here, and then we're going to choose Photo Merge, and we're going to choose HDR Merge. And what it's going to do right now is it's going to merge the three of them together. And we can see, you know, if we've got problems like this doubling up here, this is known as ghosting. We can just increase the ghosting and de-ghosting amount, and that should just fix that right away. There we go. And then we just click Merge. And now we have a photograph with the full dynamic range of the three images. Now, I'm not really going into super detail here because I've done tons of tutorials. Check them out here on the channel. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is panoramas. So panoramas are essentially, you know, when you've got a scene and it's a nice wide scene, it's wider than what you can capture with your camera. You capture, you capture the middle, you capture the other side, stitch them together. We can now do that inside of Lightroom CC. And if we look at the panorama here, here's one I shot in Hawaii. And all we need to do here is just right click and then we're just going to go down to photo merge and we're going to choose panorama merge. And you'll see here it's working quite quickly and quite well. And we can see it's going to be a panorama. I can click on auto crop. That looks nice. And then just choose merge. It's going to take a little moment here and it's going to put it together. And there we go. And of course you can go into all your adjustment tools here. And we can do all our adjustments on all of these together. So let's play around for exposure. Give it a little, little warmth, not too much there. Let's recover our shadows a little bit. Open up our highlights. Set our whites. And our blacks. And you can see we're able to create this nice panorama. Now, what about the Rolls Royce of this? And that's an HDR panorama. HDR panorama, where you're going to set your camera to bracket, just like you would when you're shooting in HDR. You're going to expose, you know, regular and one brighter and one darker. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your shot, you know, three shots, tick, tick, tick. Then rotate your camera a little bit, tick, tick, tick. Rotate your camera a little bit more and then a little bit more. So essentially what you're doing is you're shooting HDRs, but you're also overlapping them so you can shoot a panorama at the same time. And no, it's not an accident that I'm not holding it this way, I'm holding it this way. It's nice to shoot in portrait mode when you do that because then you capture more detail in the skies and you capture the ground at the same time. Otherwise, you get a very thin panorama lacking that sky and foreground. If you do it this way, you can capture a better panorama. All right, so let's have a look at putting all of those together in one shot. So I've got this beautiful HDR panorama that I shot in Koalua Valley in Hawaii. And then we're just going to right click, we're going to choose Photo Merge, and we're going to choose HDR Panorama Merge. And now it's going to attempt to do the HDR and the panorama at the same time. So what's happening right now in the background, it's merging the HDRs, and then it's going to stitch them together into a panorama. And there we go, we can see that that's happened. Now there's a little bit of detail around the edges. If we're worried about losing it, we can just take the boundary warp and I'll just drag that out. And that just stretches that out to beautifully fit it and we're not losing any pixels. And I'm gonna choose Merge. All right, so let's have a look. Like maybe we wanna enhance the blue in the sky here. Let's just choose Blues. And notice we've got this thing here. It's called Targeted Adjustment. So if we click on this little target here, we can set it for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. So why don't we set it for Luminance first? And I'm just gonna click on the sky here and notice how I can make those blues darker or lighter. Let's make them a little bit darker. That's a luminance. Then we go down here, let's grab the saturation. And why don't we give them a little bit more color? We can boost that saturation right there. And of course, here we can change the color itself. All right, so let's grab it again. And what I'm doing right now is we're moving it over. We're looking for color to sample. And if I click, notice it's going to sample that color immediately. See how it's selected there. And then all we need to do is, of course, go over it. That's the color we're going to use. And we can play around and see that. We're changing right now. 
the hue. So you can change the actual color itself. Maybe make it a little bit more green. We could go down to the saturation. We could make that green really saturated or desaturated. And then of course we've got the luminous, which is the brightness values that are gonna be affected in that area there. So this enables us to target different areas inside of the photograph to you know, boost the hue saturation and brightness. So it's a really useful tool. So don't forget that your Lightroom CC features are also going to work on your mobile uh, phone and also your mobile tablet. So do you prefer Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC? Let me know in the comments. And I also have another question when it comes to like tethering and different things like that. What brand of camera do you use? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. So anyway, if you like this video, smash that like button into dust. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also just ring that little notification bell. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.